The other day I published a video about the lighting concepts that can be very important for any 3D artist and one comment caught my attention. Inspiration tasks again at it, explaining basic things like it is something new. And this actually gave me the idea for this video. I did some research and I found out that most of the concepts and knowledge or at least the overarching fundamentals have been already established and we've been using them before the 2000s. So how is that possible? Let me explain. You see, most of the fundamental concepts in 3D animation, game development, VFX and 3D in general have been discovered before the start of this millennium. Due to the rapid advancements in computer technology and the pioneering work of the early computer scientists and artists. Which honestly I believe they were artists and scientists at the same time. In the 70s and the 80s, the development of basic algorithms for rendering, shading and modeling laid the groundwork for what would become the standard practices in these fields. But I believe the 90s saw a more significant leap in the application of these concepts, driven by the increasing power of computers and honestly the demand of CG work which pushed the concepts and theories that were discovered to be practiced and become a real thing. And I firmly believe that the foundation laid during this era have been the cornerstone of what we have today. So let's try to break it down a bit more and go back in history to the 70s all the way up to the late 90s. So in the 70s, a good portion of the fundamental concepts and technologies in 3D computer graphics were developed which I think started setting the stage for the future of 3D animation and visual effects in general. And one of the key discoveries during this time was the development of polygonal modeling techniques, which allowed for the representation of 3D objects using a mesh of polygons, and this method became a cornerstone for 3D modeling, enabling of course the creation of complex shapes and forms in digital environments that we know as 3D software. Another major advancement was the invention of raster graphics, which allowed for images to be displayed on screens by representing them as a grid of pixels. This technology actually was crucial for rendering images, I mean 3D images and animations on computer screens, and it marked a shift from vector graphics which were limited in their ability to represent realistic scenes. The 70s also saw the development of basic shading techniques, such as Gorin shading and funk shading. Gorge shading introduced by Henry Gorard was one of the first methods to simulate smooth surfaces by interpolating vertex colors across polygons. And funk shading on the other hand improved upon this by interpolating surface normals instead of colors resulting in a more realistic highlights and better representations of shiny surfaces. Interestingly enough, and based on what I found, the 70s saw early experimentations in keyframe animation, where specific keyframes are defined and the computer generates the in-between frames. And this method became essential for 3D animation and remains a very important fundamental technique in animation even today. But here's the thing. The combination of these discoveries in the 70s laid the groundwork for more sophisticated techniques and tools that emerged in the following decades. So let me give you a list of concepts and techniques that were discovered and pioneered in the 70s. And this includes polygonal modeling, raster graphics, gore shading, funk shading, basic keyframe animation, wireframe modeling, busy curves and surfaces, z-buffering, ray casting, texture mapping in its early development, solid modeling, parametric surfaces, aliasing and anti-aliasing, scale line rendering, spline curves, bounding volumes, surface normals, perspective projection, depth sorting, and frame buffering, just to name a few. So as you can see, the 70s were a great start in the field of computer graphics, but the 1980s saw a tremendous growth and innovation. One of the most significant developments of the decade was the introduction of more sophisticated rendering techniques, particularly ray tracing, and this is where things started to get exciting. Ray tracing allowed for the simulation of light and shadows with a remarkable accuracy, enabling the creation of realistic images by tracing the path of light as it interacts with objects in a scene. This technique actually was developed by pioneers like Turner Witted, becoming a fundamental method of producing photorealistic visuals, of course with the standards of that time, which influenced both animation and visual effects. 
And during the same period, the concept of texture mapping was refined, allowing artists to apply detailed images to 3D models. And the good thing is that texture mapping, combined with advanced shading techniques like the ones developed in the previous decade, enabled the creation of more complex surfaces. Interestingly enough, the 80s also witnessed the rise of CGI in the media in general, but most notably in the film industry with the creation of the first fully generated human character in young Sherlock Holmes in 1985 and the use of extensive CGI environments in Tron 1982, in addition to other projects that use CGI in film especially. Moreover, this decade saw the development of new tools that would become essentials for 3D artists and designers especially. Programs like AutoCAD, which was released in 1982, in addition to other software in this field, which helped architects and designers of all sorts to do their work on their computers. And here is a list of some of the most important 3D concepts that were pioneered in the 80s. We have subdivision surfaces, radiosity, fractal geometry, bump mapping, volumetric rendering, the early development of motion capture, particle systems, global elimination, morph target animation, environment mapping, advanced anti-aliasing techniques, render man shading language, the creation of nerves, shadow mapping, reflection mapping, in addition to many other stuff. But things started to get serious in the 1990s and 3D concepts evolved dramatically. One of the most significant developments during this decade was the refinement of polygonal modeling, which became the dominant method of creating 3D objects. And this technique allowed for the construction of complex models using simple geometric shapes, making it easier to create detailed and realistic representations of characters, environments, and all different objects. Basically, the same concepts of polygonal modeling from the late 90s and the early 2000s are the same that we are using today for the most part. Another major concept that gained traction in the 90s was subdivision surfaces. And this technique allowed for smooth and curved surfaces to be generated from a polygonal base mesh, providing a way to create organic shapes like character faces or fluid surfaces. Texture mapping also saw significant advancements in the 90s, and techniques such as UV mapping allowed for more precise control over textures and how they are placed on models. And rendering especially saw a lot of improvement, particularly with development and the widespread use of global illumination, which simulates the complex interactions of light within a scene, including reflections, refractions, and shadows that enabled a new level of realism in 3D graphics. And this period in general also saw the rise of ray tracing to practice, which became more efficient and capable of reproducing stunning realistic images by accurately simulating how light behaves in a virtual environment. And animation is another area where things got better. One concept is scalar animation. This method allowed for a more natural and fluid movement, particularly for characters, and became a standard in both animation and video games. This decade also saw improvements in keyframing techniques, where specific frames of animation were defined and the computer generated the in-betweens of frames. And as opposed to the early development, this time it became more refined and much better. Another important and core concept, especially for visual effects that we have seen in the 90s is particle systems, which were used to simulate fuzzy like fire, smoke, and explosions by manipulating thousands or even millions of small particles, which allowed for creating all different things that you can see especially in live action movies. And here is an extended list of some of the concepts and techniques that were developed in the 90s and we are using till today. And this includes physically based rendering, real time rendering, skeletal animation, subsurface scattering, high dynamic range imaging, level of detail, normal mapping, ambient occlusion, motion blur, advanced techniques of global illumination, displacement mapping, procedural texturing, image-based rendering, dynamic simulation for soft bodies and fluids, in addition to non-realistic rendering, advanced techniques in inverse kinematics, advanced techniques in particle systems, and the refinement of keyframe animation in addition to crowd simulation which was later used in movies such as Lord of the Rings and many many other movies. All of these were kind of the basics and the fundamentals that we know today. But of course over the 20 or 30 years that came later, we saw a lot of developments and progress in the field and CGI basically became infinitely better. And generally speaking I would say this era is I mean the one we are living in today, is the era of application of theories and concepts that scientists pioneered in the early days. 
but of course the wheel of progress is still moving forward and we are still coming up with kind of micro techniques and uh and concepts that help us as 3d artists become better and create better art even faster and more efficiently which is more important actually and there you have it guys i hope you found this video useful and informative if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.